Good morning, Year 10. Today we're going to continue our topic of quadratics and we're going to be looking at factorising monic quadratic trinomials. But before we do, <clears throat> let's quickly go back and revise the other factorising techniques that we learnt last lesson. So the first question is a difference of two squares. The reason I know that, or one of the ways that we can tell that, <clears throat> is that there are two terms in the expression. Um, both of them can be square rooted, which is also a good sign, and they are separated by a minus sign. So to factorize this into a perfect uh, difference of two squares, we know this is going to go into two brackets. We're going to square root the first term. The square root of 36a squared is 6a, and that will go at the start of each bracket. And then the square root of 25 is 5. That goes at the end of each bracket. In between, one of them is going to be a plus, and the other one's going to be a minus. Part B is also a difference of two squares because we have something squared minus something else. This one's not quite as nice because we have a bracket for the first term and the 11 can't be square rooted, but that's okay. It can still be done using the same method. So again, the two brackets, I square root the first one, which will just be x minus three, which goes at the start of each bracket. Then I square root 11, which unfortunately will have to stay in square root form. We don't ever want to go to a decimal. And then we're going to have one plus and one minus in between, and that's it. Question C has four terms in it. So when that happens, that tells me that I want to factorize in pairs. So looking at the four options that I have there, if I take the first two terms, I could factorize a three and an X out of them. That would leave me with one X from the first term and minus two A from the second term. Now looking at the third and the fourth term, um, knowing that I need to get an X in the beginning of the first bracket, and I don't want that minus sign, I'm going to have to factorize at negative seven to get a positive X there. But bringing the negative seven out of the 14 will leave a negative two A which now makes the two brackets there the same, which is what I wanted. So the x take away 2a is a common factor, and the 3x and the minus 7 are what is left over, and they go into another bracket. Okay, part D. This, we're meant to be factorizing, even though there's already brackets in there, but we have something squared minus something else squared. So this is actually a difference of two squares again. So we're going to have two big sets of brackets and I'm going to square root this first position which would just be b plus five at the start of each bracket. Then I'm going to square root the second position which would be b minus five and b minus five. Now in between, one of them's going to be a plus and the other one's going to be a minus. But for the negative solution, you will need to put brackets around the B minus five because that negative will need to expand through. So to tidy that up, in the first bracket, I have B plus B, which is two B, five minus five will just disappear. In the second bracket, I'll expand it out. I have B plus five minus B, and then minus minus makes a plus five. This time B minus B will cancel out, and I have five plus five, which is 10. So I really just have two B times 10, which is 20 B. So it's not really factorized anymore. That's because the whole thing just comes down to one nice term, which is 20 B. All right, so moving on to our next section, the monic trinomial. A trinomial, 
as kind of hinted in the name, the word the, the try means that we have three terms. Okay, so three terms, which will be in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So I've underlined there the three terms, but the key thing is, is that you will have an x squared, an x, and a constant. Now, the a, b, and c in a trinomial could take on any number, but in order for it to be monic, it means that the a would need to be equal to 1. Um, it cannot be equal to 0 is what that symbol there should be. So monic, it says down here, monic trinomials occur when a is equal to 1. It still does not matter what values b and c take on. So we're now going to consider, because a is 1, that our trinomial will look like this, x squared plus bx plus c. To factorise it, we are going to find the factor pairs of C and then from the possible factor pairs we need to find the ones that will sum to give B. In other words they have to multiply to give the number on the end and add to give the number in front of the X. Okay, and then we're going to factorize it into a set of brackets like this using the two numbers that they're calling P and Q in this example here to put it into brackets. Okay, so here are some questions. Question number one says factorize A squared plus 6A plus 8. Now, I know you've seen these before, but the first couple I will do quite slowly just to make sure that you remember what's going on, and then we will speed things up a little bit as we go. So assuming that you don't remember how to do these, what we do is we start with the number eight here, and we're trying to find what numbers can multiply to give eight. So thinking to your times tables, we would know that one times eight makes eight, and two times four makes eight. They're the only two options, they're, they're what we call the factor pairs, that times to give eight. But then, of those two options, we want them to add to give six. Now unfortunately, one plus eight adds to give nine, so that option doesn't work. But two plus four does make six, so that is the option that works. Now that we know the two numbers, we can put them straight into our double set of brackets. The pronumeral that we have is A, so A will go at the start of each bracket. And then the two numbers were, one was a two, so a positive two and a positive four, and we're done. Now it seems easy enough when all the numbers are positive, it can be a little bit tricky when there are negative numbers involved. So let's try that again with part B. This time we have a squared minus 6a plus 5. So starting with the 5, the only things that can times to give 5 are 1 and 5. That's it. But getting them to add to give a negative 6. As soon as you have a negative number showing up in here, either one or both of your numbers will need to be negative. Now, another tip is, because the number on the end is positive, if only one of them was negative, then that number on the end would be negative. It actually means both numbers need to be negative in order to multiply to give a positive 5. So it would need to be a negative 1 and a negative 5 that multiply to give a positive 5, but also negative 1 and negative 5 add to give the negative 6. Okay, so that works. So we put it into brackets, our pronumeral is A, one number that we found was a negative 1, the other number was a negative 5, doesn't matter if you put the numbers in the brackets in the opposite order. Okay, part C, x squared minus 2x minus 8. So we're looking for two numbers that times to give negative 8, this time because that number is negative, it means that one of the numbers will be negative. So to get 8, it could be 1 and 8, 
2 and 4. I know I need to put some minus signs in there though. The question is, is it going to be the bigger number or the smaller number that is negative? Because they're going to add to give a negative number, it means the bigger number needs to be negative. If the smaller one was, then it would end up being a positive result. Okay, so I need on my bigger number in each pair, it could be a negative 8 or it could be a negative 4. Now out of those options, which one adds to give a negative 2? Well, 1 minus 8 is minus 7, so that doesn't work. 2 minus 4 is minus 2, so that is the option that works. So our answer is going to be x at the front of each bracket. It'll be x plus 2 and x minus 4. Part D. The first thing um, about this question is that your quadratic is in, your trinomial is in the wrong order. The y squared is first, that's fine, but the 3y should be next and the minus 4 should be on the end. If you try to do it in the wrong order, you're going to have a lot of trouble. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give negative 4 and add to give 3. So I think it's time we start to speed this up a little bit and try to find these numbers in our head. So things at times to give negative 4 would be 1 and 4. One of the numbers would need to be negative, which in this time will be the negative 1 and a positive 4 so that I can get a positive 3 as my end result of adding those together. So a, positive, a negative 1 and a positive 4 are my two numbers. Question 2. Factorise 2x squared minus 2x minus 12. Now this looks like it's non-monic because we have a 2 at the front here. However, we're not learning non-monics today. We're going to be doing only monics. So what I need to do first is factorise the 2 out, which will leave me with x squared minus x minus 6. And now I can factorise that monic trinomial much more easily. So 2 out the front, double brackets. It's going to be x at the start of each one. And the numbers I'm looking for need to times to give a negative 6 and add to give a negative 1. So it will be 3 and 2. It would be a negative 3 and a positive 2. That would add to give a negative 1 and times to give negative 6. Okay, once we're comfortable with factorising, then we start heading into factorising that involves fractions. So any time that you're asked to factorise, or it might actually say simplify, you should always factorise anything that you possibly can first, and then hopefully there'll be some things that you may be able to cancel off. So for example, this question, the top of that um, fraction is a monic trinomial, so it's going to factorise into two brackets like that, and x will be at the start of each bracket. I'm looking for two numbers that times to give negative 20 and add to give a positive 1, which would be a positive 5 and a negative 4. Okay, on the bottom, the x minus 4 can't be factorised, but now that I have an x minus 4 on the bottom, that whole thing can cancel that whole x minus 4. And all that will be left is the x plus 5. I won't need the brackets around it anymore because there's nothing else left that it is multiplying with. So that's it. Question 4 says to simplify, and we can see the fractions in there. So um, having a look at the denominator of that, you can see that there are some square root signs in there, which is not so pleasant. But that does give me a little bit of a hint for the top. On the top, I have two terms, something, the x squared is there, even though the 7 is not a nice perfect square number, and then minus another term. I could actually do a difference of two squares factorised for that. So let's do that. Two brackets. Square root of the 7x squared would be root 7x at the start of each bracket. Square root of the 5 would be square root 5 in each one at the second spot of each bracket. 1 would be a plus and 1 would be a minus. On the bottom, we still have the square root of 7x plus square root of 5, which now because I factorised, we can see that square root of 7 plus 5 will cancel the square root of 7 plus 5. 
and the answer is square root of 7x minus root 5. Okay, question 5. This is a multiplication sign in between here. We have two fractions multiplied together, but remember what I said, we want to factorise everything first. So, the top of the first fraction is a monic trinomial. So there's my two brackets. We're going to have x at the beginning of each and these to multiply to give negative 10 and add to give a 3. So multiplying to give 10 would be 5 and 2. If it's a positive 5 and a negative 2, that would make a positive 3. On the bottom, the x squared minus 4, that's a difference of two squares. So square root of x squared is x, square root of 4 is 2, 1 will be a plus, 1 will be a minus. Okay, then multiply and let's factorise the second fraction. The top is a trinomial. Um, we need to find numbers that times to give negative 2 and add to give a negative 1. So times and to give negative 2, or just 2 would be 1 and 2, but if we have a negative 2 and a positive 1, that's how we get the negative signs to work. On the bottom, we have two terms. There's no minus sign there, so it's not a difference of two squares, and there's no square on the x either. This is just a common factor. So I'm going to bring the 2 as the factor out the front, and that will leave x plus 5 to go inside the bracket. So when you are multiplying fractions, you can cancel anywhere from the top and the bottom. Okay, so we can go x plus 5 and x plus 5 will cancel off. x minus 2 and x minus 2 will cancel off. And I think that's it. So writing down what is left, on the top I have x minus 2 and x plus 1. On the bottom I have this 2 still hiding over here, so 2 and the x plus 2 from the first fraction. And that's it. You can just leave it factorised like that for the solution. Question six would be the hardest type of question, so I'll put a star next to that. Because This is harder because we are wanting to add these fractions together. And any time you want to add fractions, you know that you need a common denominator. Now, the denominators are quite messy at the moment, but like always, factorise first, and that will hopefully make things a little bit easier. So the first fraction, we just have an x plus 2 on the bottom. That cannot be factorised, so let's just leave that one alone. Then we want to plus. Looking at the second fraction, we have this monic trinomial. We want times to give negative 18, which could be 1 and 18. It could be 2 and 9. It could be 3 and 6. But whichever number I choose has to also add to give a negative 7. One of the numbers is negative because both of those numbers there are negative and it would mean the bigger number is negative. So the one that's going to work is going to be a negative 9 and a positive 2. So x minus 9, x plus 2 for the solution. And on the top we still have the 3x. Now that means that there's actually already a common factor of x plus 2 in both of those denominators. So to get a common denominator, the first fraction just needs to have that x minus 9 multiplied to it. So my common denominator is just going to be x minus 9 and x plus 2. We have both fractions together here. Now as I said, this first fraction already has the x plus 2. I just need to multiply the 4 with the x minus 9. Okay. The second fraction already had the correct denominator, so I don't need to change anything, I just need to add the 3x that was already on the numerator. Okay, now to finish this off, you expand out the top, which will be 4x minus 36 plus 3x on the end. Don't expand out your denominators, that just makes things messy again, so just leave that all factorised up. On the top, we can collect up the x terms. 4 plus 3 makes 7x minus 36 over x take 9 and x plus 2. And that's how you'd leave your answer. 
Okay, so that means that you're ready to do exercise 8C.